Hey, what's going on my friends? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor and today we're going to be talking about mastering your intuition, truly understanding your intuition, knowing how to follow it, when to follow it, how to discern between your intuition and your thinking. And a lot of us know intuition does seem to be the key to all the things we want in life. So why couldn't it be more direct, more clear, less confusing and wonky and vague? And a lot of spiritual seekers I find are getting very frustrated and discouraged and even some giving up on their intuition. But I can tell you right here and now, even if you don't watch the video, that your intuition, as you already sense inside of yourself, really is the key to getting out of whatever circumstance is troubling you and into a new and better and brighter one. And basically, I found that following my intuition over the last decade has changed and upgraded every conceivable area of my life in truly unimaginable ways. And today I'm going to share with you things I've learned uh, along the way that I really believe will help you be able to receive your intuition more clearly, discern it, and understand the nature of how it works so you can get the most out of it. So today we are going to talk about intuition. We all know what intuition is. A lot of us, I think, can sense it really is the key to all the things we want in life. It's the roadmap, the guide to our purpose, to abundance, out of our circumstance that we may have outgrown but feel trapped in. There's this guide, and it's inside of you, you know, sometimes more present than others, sometimes a bit vague, sometimes a bit confusing, seemingly contradictory, nonetheless, the guide is always there within us. And I can say I can say honestly, one of the things I've done right in my life is for the past over 10 years, I have been boldly committed to truly following the guidance of my intuition. And there have been a million times where I really questioned it. But it's delivered me to a place in my life that I feel eternally grateful I've gotten to a place in my life on all levels, mostly internally, that I never even knew was possible. If I was to have mapped out exactly what I wanted 10 years ago, I've surpassed that. And I can't really take credit. I've just been kind of following along this little trail of breadcrumbs. But I mean, it's not easy to follow your intuition. It can be sometimes tricky. Sometimes it feels like your intuition has abandoned you at the worst possible timing ever. Sometimes you feel called to do something and you're like sure of it, you know it, it resonates. It has that same frequency, like yes, this is true. This is resonating, this is authentic, this is me. Uh, this is what I'm gonna do. It feels expansive and then you fall on your face and it feels like what the hell? Your higher self just led you into a trap. So anyway, I'm gonna share a couple of different angles about intuition that I've learned along the way. I'm no expert, but I can say I, I do follow it and I have gotten a lot better understanding how it communicates and kind of why it does what it does. Whereas before, I didn't understand my intuition. I, I still don't, I still don't, don't get me wrong. I'm no freaking, I'm no expert. But there was a time where I really just didn't, I could, didn't understand it at all. And there've been many times where I felt, again, abandoned and frustrated and very discouraged because it seemed like there were times where my intuition led me somewhere that became a problem that I became stuck in. And then it went away. And I was like, what the hell, what was that about? And it made me feel very hopeless. Like what, if I can't trust this part of me, this other part of me, that seems more true than anything I know. If I can't trust that, then what can I trust? Can't really trust people. We're all fucked, we're all dysfunctional quite a bit. I can't trust my mind, Jesus. What can I trust? And I felt just completely like cut loose in this, this like unpredictable, hostile environment we call planet Earth. But looking back, I can see at all those times there, were, there was indeed a purpose. There, were, there, there wasn't like my higher self made a mistake and it certainly didn't just want to mess with me to throw me to the wolves to see what would happen. There was always a purpose, always a thread of a benefit. So anyway, I'm gonna share a few things about intuition. One, I found it to be very essential to wait for perfect timing. This can be difficult 
But I don't know about you, but I've, I've had many consequences when I have not waited for perfect timing, when I have acted out of fear. I did this like, this whole last winter, my business like took a big dive, like a bad one. I did, you know, it started to kind of like plummet my, my financial situation. I just stopped earning money. I stopped working, feeling inspired to work hard. And then I got to this point where I was like, Jesus, I got to do something. I can't just sit around. But it felt appropriate. It felt like I was going through like what I call the hermit phase, where it was time to go within, time to reflect, time to reevaluate. It didn't seem, I knew, I knew it wasn't ripe to be doing new projects, but I felt, I, I thought I, I should be because of the, the, what, what it looks like on paper. So out of fear one day, before Christmas, I decided to launch a retreat in Austin. I went on my phone kind of frantically. I found like a really cool ass Airbnb. I spent the next few days whipping up like this page. And then it was, I only booked it out halfway. After like two months of hard promotion, which for me, usually they sell it with again, like a, within two weeks, usually they're sold out and it's like effortless. And, it, and then I like, then it got to this point where life led me to these new inspired projects that wouldn't even allow me to do the retreat. And I had to cancel. I've never canceled. I felt so bad about it. I had to like tell people you can't come, the people that did sign up. And it was a real kind of a dick move, but I, I, was, it, it, I couldn't have done it really. And anyway, all, all, all this, and I also lost a lot of money on my freaking Airbnb because I only got half the refund. A lot of money. It's an expensive Airbnb. So I lost a bunch of money. I pissed off some of my most loyal fans. I put a lot of time into promoting this thing that had never even ultimately happened. At the end of the day, just to, and it was like all out of fear, all out of anxiety, you know, all out of what I thought I should do. And then like another example, what I write down here? Yeah. You know, another, another, uh, how this can work in an opposite way. You know, the kids, my children have been wanting a puppy for so long and, and they really, you know, most kids want a dog. My kids have been making a case for a dog for a while. They sit me down and say, dad, this is what we're willing to do. And we want a dog. And, and they're like, really like, they've been really kind of pushing it. And I was like, no, no, no. Then all of a sudden, I started seeing these little French bulldog synchronicities, which means I've just been running into a lot of French bulldogs and they happen to kind of catch, catch my attention. And I was like, wow, these are cool little, little dogs, neat little beings, you know, really cool personalities. And when I was in Sedona one day, I was walking like on this golf course area with uh, Aaron, my friend Aaron, and then this dude who knew us from YouTube, he came out with these two badass like French bulldogs and he, we were talking with them for like 20 minutes and his dogs were just kind of sitting by us. And then a few days later, my wife was driving home from Sedona and she said, you'll never guess what I saw at a rest stop at like three in the morning. My wife drives all throughout the night to get home. A French bulldog in the store. And she said, the French bulldog came up and was like so cute. And anyway, we're like, we, we just started to feel like now's the time to get a puppy. But all we had to do was just search around real quickly. And then we were scrolling through like our phone at this one website that just came about with like, you know, minute, a minute of searching. And all of a sudden, there's like all these different dogs available. And this one, we got to this one that we have now. And I felt this feeling of love. All of a sudden, I felt love towards this picture of a dog. And my wife said, oh my God, I feel the same thing. Sure enough, the next day, we had him. And he's the best. He's so cool. I wish, I know everyone brags about their dog. And it's like, shut up. I don't care about your dog. But he's so cool. He's so calm and so like the exact energy we were imagining. Kind of a calm, chill easygoing little guy. Just so sweet too. And it, 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 was the, it was the timing. It was a perfect timing. And anytime I've been patient and trusting to wait for the perfect timing, it's always been like that. The last three times I've moved, you know, to a different house, I haven't had to like, you know, really hire a real estate agent. Pretty much every time it's been the first house we synchronistically are led to happens to be perfect and it's just so easy. So things can be really smooth and fast when you wait for perfect timing. What the challenge is, perfect timing isn't always in alignment with what you think you need at the time. Secondly, an important thing to know, what I've learned is to trust it the whole way through. It's easy to trust when things are going well, when your, your synchronicity is leading you to the stuff your mind wants. It's like, okay, yeah, I trust when it's not so easy, it's, it's, it's hard to trust. But what I've learned is sometimes, maybe this happened to you, it's happened to me a million times, where I felt a calling to do something 
thinking it was going to be a certain way. This is going to be it. This is my big breakthrough. I'm going to, it's, it's going to look like this and I feel good about it. I'm excited. I'm happy. But it's the opposite. Not only is the thing I want not there, but what is there is a big ass challenge, a, a predicament that I've been stuck in. What the, what the hell, higher self? Are you malfunctioning? Am I misinterpreting? And then it's like, they're off on vacation and here I am in this problem. Why? Why would my higher self, why would intuition life lead me to this problem? That's pretty much the opposite of what I thought I wanted. What I've learned is oftentimes what we want, what, what's between, what stands in, the, in between where we are now and what we want is a life lesson. Oh, yay, a life lesson. Or we need to become aware of a part of ourselves that we're not yet aware of, part of our power, a part of our capability, part of our soul's wisdom is being hidden from us. And the most efficient way to uncover that, it's not a, a decade of meditation and prayer. It's this one fucking stupid problem that higher self led me into that takes about a week to climb out of. But in doing so, you get to reveal these parts of yourself that are going to be necessary and completely connected to this thing you've been wanting. It's one thing to get what you want. We saw see what happens to people that win the lottery. It's, it's like, it's bizarre how they squander millions of dollars, but it happens time and time and time again because they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't develop over time the maturity, the, 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 the experience and the, the patience and the restraint or whatever that you need to sustain that kind of money. I don't know. Um, but whatever it is, they don't got it. But it's like your higher self, like we want to give you what you want, but we also don't want you to lose it in two weeks. We want you to keep it and be able to see and like let it turn into what it's meant to turn into. So you got to go through this pain in the ass problem. And, and we're not going to help you because that's not doing you any favors. You're flipping through tarot cards, you're getting nothing. Why? Because the answers are within you, but you might have to dig kind of deep. You might have to dig, think outside the box a little bit. So anyway, I've had that happen a million times and it, I never like it, honestly, but I have been able to become a lot better at trusting that even this bizarre problem has value to me. And as long, the, the sooner I can like stop resisting, which I always do initially, but once I can stop resisting, then I can start to see, ah, 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 this, this is why. And oftentimes when you get the lesson, then you, then the scene changes very quickly. I found that following your intuition for me has become a way of life. And I know a lot of people, they, they kind of use it as a technique that they've read about online to get something. And it's okay. I, I do that to an extent. But what I found is that there's the tendency, and I, I'm guilty of this as well, of like using spiritual concepts, using even your intuition, not in a bad way, but like utilizing your intuition to attain this glorified, overhyped end, this, this result. And I've had that. I've done that. I've, 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 I've manifested things I've wanted badly and it, some have taken time and whenever they come, it's so fleeting. It's so surface level, the thing, the outcome itself. And I find that if we're not careful, I know people that do this, we just end up chasing these fleeting little highs all our lives and not even realizing that what we're kind of seeking in this outcome is there the whole time in our, in our pockets. But we never, look, we never never bother to look down and see it's there. So what I mean by that is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but for me, I know when I'm acting on my excitement, my passion, that frequency of intuition, inspiration, I feel good. I feel really freaking good. I feel happy. I feel joyful. I feel like elevated. There's a feeling of like freedom and expansiveness and like and connect, divine connection sometimes. And that feeling is there even in sometimes the most mundane things. Like for example, we're moving in like a couple weeks, not even two weeks now. And, and I, it's funny because I've used this analogy in other videos a different time we move. But, but packing up the house this past like month because I believe it's connected to this inspired transition we're going through. It's an example of me following my intuition, but it's like the nuts and bolts stuff that has to get done. It has been fantastic. I've been so happy. I don't know how 
on many levels, I should be miserable. Our house is torn apart. The kids are home from school, super restless. And like my two boys, they injure one another at least daily where someone's screaming, oh my God. And me and Patty run into the room. What the, what the fuck happened? Bash, stub my toe. You know, it's always nothing, but there's just this crazy energy in my house right now. And there's and there's no stability. Like right now, this is the only normal thing you see in my house. It's kind of propped up there. Everything else is like boxes. It's it's you know empty walls, a couch and a TV. There's not much going on. But I've been so happy packing, boxing up stuff, throwing away things, laboring away in the garage, sorting through tools and random miscellaneous stuff like that. It's been so cool. It feels so good. It also feels good. When I'm filming a video, and sometimes I film a video and it does really well. It gets where I think it needs to go. Other times it's, it doesn't do that well. But there's like the same feeling when I'm doing both of them. And what I've learned is to, again, to like, is coming from Bashar, the channeler, he says, follow what he calls your highest excitement. He calls your like passion, your purpose, your intuition, your highest excitement. Follow that for the sake of it, not to get you anywhere. So I'll kind of leave you with that, my friend. It's the, it's the whole adage of, uh, you know, enjoy the journey. It's a, it's a practice. It takes practice. But I found that when I really tr truly try to enjoy the journey, it's pretty enjoyable. And I get, if I get lost in the future, it doesn't matter what it amounts to. I'm, it's not fulfilling at all. All right, my friends, thanks for watching. Before you go, I will mention I do have a meditation I give out freely on my YouTube channel once in a while that's designed to help you reconnect with your higher self in kind of a deep way where you can just sort of play this meditation and, and the, the whole intention and the process is getting you deeper and deeper and deeper and more and more in touch with the core of who you are. I call it the Higher Self Reconnection Meditation. It's totally free. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link down below. With that said, you'll have an amazing day and I'll see you next time. Peace.